one of the upcoming features on DDR5 is on die ECC. This has been a bit misrepresented in the press. I'm going to go through exactly what it is. What's your minimum specification? So a good chunk of the memory that is sold today is actually ECC. It contains error correcting code. This enables memory that has ECC enabled in order to correct errors as they occur. Now, why would memory have errors? I hear you say. Well, memory cells are a bit finicky. Let's put it that way. So modern DRAM is actually a refreshed memory. Because you're holding charge inside your memory cells, representing your ones and zeros, that charge can leak. So every 64 milliseconds, what the memory will do is attempt to read the data, flush the cell, and write the data. That way, when, as soon as the data is written, it is essentially fresh and can last for another 64 milliseconds. This refresh, as you might imagine, consumes a little bit of power. So the drive to a memory that doesn't require as many refreshes is a good thing for low powered systems. Now, most memory is refreshed every 64 milliseconds. Technically, most cells, about 95% of cells, can retain their can retain charge for more than half a second. But there's a small, tiny amount of cells that can't retain it for that long. So 64 milliseconds is the JDEC specification for your memory refresh. Not only can cells uh, leak charge and lose their data, they're also vulnerable to what are known as bit flips. Either a zero becomes a one or a one becomes a zero. There are two main sources of bit flips. One is cosmic rays. We're thinking X-rays, alpha particles. This can occur at random. You can't really uh, design for them except in the memory itself. And those errors are on the rate of less than one per gigabyte per year. And uh, studies in this area have gone even you know, many orders of magnitude less than that. For a computer home system with 16 gigabytes of memory, don't really need to be concerned. But if you're running a data center with a petabyte of memory, then you might be getting one or two of those errors every day, and they have to be dealt with. Alongside cosmic rays, uh, thermal bit flips are also a thing. If your DRAM is running at higher temperature, it can actually transform from a zero to a one or a one to a zero just due to the thermal interaction electrons inside the DRAM cell. Now, when one of these bit flips occurs, if you're running a non-ECC memory, like you are in most consumer systems and smartphones, for example, then that bit flip is undetected. If that uh, bit flip happens in data, which is critical to the system, you could cause a system crash. If it's data which is important, it could corrupt the data or it could change, say, you know, a five to a six and suddenly you have more money. That's not how it works. But though more often than not, those thermal flips happen in unused memory. So they're non-detected, they're non-critical and they don't crash the system. However, there are instances where that can happen. And that's why we have ECC memory in servers and any critical system where data integrity is critical. So one of the critical features of DDR5 is on die ECC memory. Though this is different to the ECC I've just explained. And a lot of people are getting confused as to whether DDR5 comes with ECC or not. So on die ECC is part of the DDR5 JDEX specification. And it's not really to do with data retention, but more to do with reliability. So those thermal bit flips I was telling you about, as the cell size with more advanced process nodes get smaller and smaller. So your memory modules get denser and denser. This is you know, going from eight gigabytes to 16 gigabytes, to 32 gigabytes. Then as we move to 64 gigabytes, 128 gigabytes per module, the cells have to get closer together. They get more dense. That makes them more vulnerable to bit flips. And as a corollary as well, uh, they actually hold their charge less. On day ECC, is a way of managing those bit flips so more cells at the production stage pass the validation method. It's simply to say, well, normally some cells won't work because you get defects uh, in the manufacturing process. But with this on die ECC, you can actually make sure that more of those cells reach the required JDEC specification and you can sell that memory. 
on-die ECC, though, is different to mainline ECC, the standard ECC we see in servers today. That sort of ECC means is to do with data transfer. So if you have your memory, if you have your data, your instructions in memory, and it's doing its refresh every 64 uh, milliseconds, and OK, you get some thermal flips, and uh, it automatically corrects them. That's great. But the minute you have to move that data out of memory, say, to the CPU or to the GPU through the CPU, if your whole chain, if your CPU is an ECC, if your memory is an ECC, then as that data is in motion, it could bit flip, and you could lose that data. What ECC throughout the whole chain does is it protects the integrity of that data. That is not what on-die ECC is. On-die just detects the data when it's just on the chip. The minute you move the chip, that on-die ECC doesn't mean a lot. So on-die ECC isn't the way we've traditionally thought of ECC in the past because your data isn't protected when in transit. The problem we've got here is that uh, the concept of on-die ECC for DDR5 wasn't really explained properly to the press at the time it was announced. Also, memory manufacturers are now advertising their DDR5 in advance of launch as having on-die ECC support. Thing is, they're not explaining exactly what on-die ECC support means. Think of it this way, on-die ECC allows memory manufacturers to go denser on the process to get higher density memory, and more of it comes out of the factory and lowers the cost. What it does not do is protect your data. It enables more scaling down to denser process nodes, and it does more protection against those thermal and cosmic bit flips. But the minute you move your data, you're no longer secure. Not unless you have a processor that is ECC enabled, and the DDR5 module itself is ECC enabled. Just having on-die ECC does not mean it has a full module ECC. And then you need the whole CPU pathway module ECC chain in order to keep that complete and keep your data protected. So the takeaway here is that on-die ECC isn't ECC for you or me. It is simply a device that helps make the memory cheaper and better yielding. If you do need a proper end-to-end -end ECC solution where your data is fully protected from CPU to memory or uh, memory to accelerator, then you still need to invest in an ECC-based platform. It's going to be fun to see how these memory manufacturers deal with customers who say, you said I had ECC, when in actual fact, you really don't. So what's my minimum specification here? Well, there's been a big argument for actually having ECC everywhere. One of the issues with having ECC is that you're limited to JDEC specifications on your memory frequency and your sub timings. Now you could overclock ECC memory, but then it no longer becomes ECC verified. And the same goes with sub timings. Imagine now you're sitting there with your DDR4-3200 memory kit, and it's running at a CAS latency of 22, because that's the JDEC specifications for ECC DDR4-3200, not the CAS latency 15 or 16 that you might be running. ECC memory is going to be slower than consumer memory, but as a result, everybody's data is properly fully secure. The only reason why a non-ECC memory exists is because certain CPU manufacturers wanted better uh, benchmark results at the time. And also it does make it a little bit cheaper on the production side. Because thermal bit flips and cosmic bit flips uh, from a consumer standpoint don't happen that often. I mean, seriously, we're gonna have to be getting into the one terabyte of system memory per desktop in order for that to be really a problem. ECC really isn't needed in the consumer. However, from a designer standpoint, from a, a code, standpoint, from an enterprise standpoint, from a commercial standpoint, having ECC would be good. Gamers might complain though. Oh, and just an aside, you can put RGB on ECC memory. There's nothing stopping you from doing that. No, there's nothing stopping the manufacturers from doing that. So if you want to see RGB ECC memory, please let them know in the comments.